Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about rattle spoons on the ice and Brad Hawthorne's going to share a bunch of good information on how to catch more fish with the three main spoons in the buckshot family of spoons and uh, he's also going to start things off by just talking about when spoons come into play for him and how he likes to utilize them. The buckshot comes from a time period where um, years and years ago when the buckshot came out adding a rattle to spoons was was earth shattering it was like hey we just added a bunch of sound and that was largely due to the buckshot's success for the last 30 40 years it's just been that rattle as calling fish in from a distance the colors the premium hooks the the design features in the lure itself was just not done now fast forward you know there's a lot of different options so i'm going to start at the bottom of spoon fishing okay spoon fishing is just getting sound below the ice to draw fish in from a distance okay you know whether you're using that on a spoon rod or a jig or a set line rod that the, the, it's it's the same you're, you're trying to accomplish the same thing so i usually use rattle spoons when the fish are slightly more aggressive or if the fish are a little neutral but are still have that curiosity factor where I can draw them in from a distance. When my fish are like two, three, four fish an hour, I'm usually using rattles because I want to bring those fish in from 20, 30, 40 feet away. So if you see that you're on Mille Lacs, Winnie, Red, Lake of the Woods, and you're getting bit on rattles more, but let's say the fishing's not on fire. Let's say you're catching 10, 15 fish a day, and you, you may think, well, that's a slow day fishing, but all your fish came on rattles. That should tell you that you're on a rattle spoon bite, even though you're only catching, you know, 12 to 15 fish a day. So anytime you're catching fish and actively pulling them in from a distance is when you want to use a rattle spoon. Okay, so then we dive into once you've established that you're on a rattle spoon bite, whether triggering the spoon, whether that's with your rod tip or from a distance, whether you're calling them in, or when those rattles activate and actually make noise, the fish is biting. Or a combination of those two is when you know you're on a spoon bite. So what I always tell my customers is really pay attention to what's going on below you. When you're staring at your helix and you see the fish back away three or four times before it commits, change up your jigging cadence. And, and jigging cadence, I feel like, really shouldn't be used a lot in rattle spoons. You should be talking when you're, when you're spoon fishing rattle spoons. The noise you're giving off. Not the cadence, but the noise you're jigging, your jigging action is giving off. Not the action of the spoon, because I feel that when you're using a rattle bait, the sound of the rattle is more important than the action of the spoon, if that makes any sense. And we'll dive into that a little bit more later, but that's when you really are identifying that you're on a rattle, rattle bite and how to jig it. Whether that's you're calling fish in from a distance, you're slamming it on the bottom, you're jigging four feet in the air, whatever it is, the rattles are catching a fish. Okay, then you dive into the different types of rattle spoons. So we have the OG buckshot right there. That is the OG buckshot. One of the best spoons ever made, still will be. It's often imitated, never copied, and You'll see a lot of the new manufacturers that'll manufacture rattle spoons. They have problems like rattles fall off, things like that. Buckshot, it's been around for years. It's a staple at Northland, it's gonna be a staple. It's the best one out there. So if you're looking for your basic meat and potatoes rattle spoon, Northland, Buckshot rattle spoon, you probably already have 15, 20 of them. Most, most ice fishermen do. Sizes for Buckshots, I'm using eighth and 16th just because I fish clear bodies of water. If you use stained bodies of water, you can obviously upsize that. Three, you know, three eighths, great size to use for stained water and bigger fish. Sizing buckshots, the original buckshot is the easiest thing you're ever gonna do. If you have a couple eighths, a couple sixteenths, a couple quarters, a couple three eighths, you're good to go. You're, you don't really need any more than those eight, 10, 12 spoons and a couple different colors, you're good to go. So that's a quick rundown on the OG original buckshot spoon. And now Brad is gonna change gears and he's gonna talk about the new loud and proud addition to the buckshot lineup and that is the coffin spoon. Now this guy came on the scene last year and is a thunderbolt of a spoon. And by that I mean this guy here is heavy and a lot of times with heavier spoons, you don't get the action. Coffin spoon, 
has great action. It's got a great fluttering action to it. It's got a super, super loud rattle on the back of it, as hence the buckshot name. And this spoon is a real beefy presentation. Um, coffin spoon, I really love the hooks on it. I love the tail, I love the attraction of this. Coffin spoon is your best friend when you're making noise on the bottom or just above it. So if I need to, if fish are responding to me slamming this on this muck, sand, or rock, if you need a lot of attracting power and need to make a lot of noise underneath the ice, the coffin spoon is gonna be your go-to spoon. It's got flash, noise, vibration, and it rates high, high in all three of those categories. So like the rattle's loud, the flash is there, the noise is there, the vibration is there. This thing is your bullhorn, okay? This is your loud, obnoxious, everything to bring fish in spoon. I know most of you watching this video right now have probably used the buckshot spoon, the original. It's been around for a long time. It's caught a bunch of walleyes. And some of you probably also picked up the coffin spoon this past winter since it was just released for last winter and uh, caught some fish. I caught a bunch of walleyes on it. I caught some perch, I caught some crappies. It's a good spoon, but a spoon in this lineup that you probably have not used because it's just being released this winter is the new glass buckshot shot and for me this is a really cool spoon I had the chance to use it a little bit this past winter and had a lot of success with it just because well you know what I won't even dig deep into it I'll let Brad talk a little bit about the new glass buckshot spoon the glass buckshot this is my favorite spoon in the buckshot line it's actually my favorite spoon of all time it came out last year I was super excited one of the hardest things to do when you're in R&D in the in the fishing industry is to keep your mouth shut when you're, you're excited about really really cool things like this and we had to right this spoon for me was super fun a because we caught a lot of fish on it and b just because of how intricate this spoon is and because I call this a bridge spoon this spoon bridges flashiness, noise, and rattle. Like the, what the glass, the buckshot spoon, the glass buckshot spoon did for me was really go, hey, instead of having to change techniques like right on a dime, it, I look at it as a bridge spoon. So when I'm going from a normal buckshot to a coffin, a lot of times I'll insert the glass buckshot in there. Or if I know I'm going to red like early season and I need a, a, a rattle that really transmits the furthest through the water column, that's gonna be your glass buckshot. And it's the most detailed spoon you're ever gonna see. I mean, it's got that rattle perfectly encased in the center of it. That again is a glass rattle where it gets its name. It's super loud, super high pitched. And the finish of this lure is protected by the poly case it's in. I mean, you may bang this on the rocks and when it's dry, it looks like it's all scratched up. When it gets wet, it looks better than new. So like this spoon, if you got a bunch of them in your box and you're going across the lake, you don't have to worry about rattles falling out, paint falling, that type of thing. Like it's just a really, really good spoon. And I'm using this in natural colors just because I'm on Mille Lacs and that's a clear body of water. Now, when we were up on Red and Lake of the Woods last year, this guy in anything glow or zappy was putting fish down there and literally with Hummingbird Live, we were watching fish you put this thing down there and they would see it tumbling down and the fish were coming within 10 feet of the bottom of your hole right away so don't just think it's all about the rattle they can see this this guy coming just from the flash of it now where the glass block shot really shined was everywhere all of the spoons came into play your normal buck shot your coffin minnow you can slam this on the bottom it's gonna be super loud you can dead stick this spoon. It's gonna have that, that natural look to it, so you're not gonna scare fish away with bright, zappy colors. So you're gonna be able to kinda the match the hatch with this spoon. Have all three of these in there and learn how to fine tune your, your rattle spoon fishing with these three players in the game and you'll catch more walleyes. Well that's about all we got for you in this video. Special thanks to Brad for sharing some good insights into the buckshot family and sharing some good info on like when you should use one spoon versus the other. That's definitely useful information when you're out on the ice. So if you enjoyed this video and you learned something, make sure to hit that little red subscribe button down below because we have a lot more awesome content coming in the future right now we're like in the thick of fall and ice is just around the corner I know you guys can can feel it in your bones so we'll see you in the next video